We are monitoring a potentially dangerous storm as Tropical Storm Melissa makes its way through the Caribbean. Will it impact Jamaica, Haiti, Cuba? Is the United States in play? Let's get right into the details so you can be prepared. As of the time of this recording on Wednesday night, Melissa was located just to the south and southeast of Jamaica as it continues its stationary, although slight westward track through the Caribbean Sea. And here we can see on satellite imagery that over the last 24 to 48 hours, Melissa has really gotten her act together. As we are starting to see those towering convective thunderstorms at the core of the storm, they're beginning to build with the heating of the day and they are maintaining their organization overnight, which is a good sign for continued development. Now, right now, as it continues to move through this environment, it is getting sheared off a little bit at the top by some higher level winds, but we expect those to subside over the next 48 to 72 hours, and that's going to allow Melissa to rapidly strengthen by the time we get to early next week. The GFS model does have Melissa remaining relatively stable and stationary over the next 24 to 48 hours. Here's Jamaica, here's Haiti, there's Cuba to the north. But then by the time we get through the weekend, we do expect it to make a northerly turn and then accelerate towards the west before eventually making a right-hand turn and coming back over the countries of Jamaica or eastern Cuba. Now, if it does take a little bit further easterly track, we're going to watch the western part of Haiti to be potentially impacted. As we look at the European ensemble, though, it generally has that same idea of taking it to the north, keeping it relatively stationary, and then bringing it to the west, and then making that right-hand turn. Notice that more of the ensemble models on the European ensemble do take it right over Cuba, and so we're going to monitor eastern Cuba. A lot of the models also have it going over western Haiti. That's another area we're going to watch. Underneath all of this, all these spaghetti plots is Jamaica. So Jamaica, you're right in the path of this potentially devastating hurricane. But also, we're now noticing that several of the ensemble members are wanting to keep the storm pointed more towards Central America. So there's a lot of possibility, and it's going to take another 24 to 48 hours for us to really get an idea of which areas are going to be significantly impacted by Melissa. But the thing I want you to notice here on the ensemble is it's right now at about 1,000 millibar low. By the time we get to the weekend, most the average of the ensemble members have this storm at about a 960 millibar low. Some members do have it going much lower with this barometric pressure, which means it could rapidly intensify into an even stronger storm. But then as it goes out to sea, it maintains that strong intensity at a 960, 968 millibar low. So this storm is going to have a lot of impact, not only in the Caribbean, but out through the Atlantic as it makes its way out to sea and away from the United States. The thing that's going to allow this rapid intensification are the warm sea surface temperatures here in the Caribbean Sea, where we see temperatures generally 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. Now, we've not had any storms make their way through this part of the tropics this hurricane season, so this is relatively untapped waters. So there's high ocean heat content here in the water. That's going to allow these storms, as they continue to build and tower up and strengthen, we're going to see that rapid intensification because of these exceptionally warm waters here. And so that's why we believe that by the time we get to the weekend, we're going to be experiencing Category 1, if not 2, possibly a major hurricane by the time we get to the beginning of next week. And so and that is consistent with the model guidance that we are getting from the different ensemble members. Out to 48 hours, which is, would be for the beginning of the weekend, we're going to see that mainly stay at about a tropical storm level. But then over the weekend, most of the ensemble members strengthen it to a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane. Some even by the time we get to early and middle parts of next week want to take it to a Category 3, which would make it a major hurricane. But where it goes, what land masses are impacted, that's still to be determined as we do, we're still trying to determine the path of this particular storm. We're going to look at two different models here. This is the H. Uh, the HAPS A model. And so we see this really beginning to intensify by the time we get to Saturday down to a 960 millibar low. Here's Jamaica to the north. It's remaining to the south and it will bypass Jamaica to the south, but it's intensifying to almost a 900 millibar low, which would potentially make this a category three, four storm with a very deep low pressure at its core. We've not seen any storms this hurricane season approach 900 millibar in its barometric pressure. The last one that we had to go sub 900 millibar was last year with Hurricane Milton. But thankfully, as it gets to that condition, it is staying to the south of Jamaica. And so the main impacts for Jamaica and Haiti would be just heavy amounts of rain as the storm moves to the south. But when, when does it turn back towards the north and back to the northeast? That's still to be determined. The other model that we want to look at today is the H Wharf model. Now, this model has Jamaica here, there's Haiti. It wants to split it right between the two, but it doesn't bring the tropical storm as deep of a low pressure system, down to about 940, maybe 935 millibars. And it is going to impact more of eastern Cuba as it makes that turn towards the north and to the northeast. So again, the H Wharf model wants to bring it between Jamaica and Haiti. And if we look at that northeast quadrant of the storm, that's where we would see the highest winds and the heaviest amounts of rainfall. So western parts of Haiti could be significantly impacted. And we're talking about dangerous mudslides possible 
in this part of the Caribbean. So we're going to watch to see if this is the solution that eventually plays out, that this one has a much more impactful situation to Jamaica, to Haiti, to Cuba, if this is the solution that does win out. So we're going to continue to monitor this over the next 24 to 48 hours, and we'll bring you our latest updates in our next video. As I mentioned, one of the impacts is going to be the heavy amounts of rainfall with this particular storm. And so we, we have Haiti, we have Jamaica here, we have Cuba. We could see rainfall amounts of 8 to 12 inches in those areas highlighted in the yellow. But you start to get into southern Haiti, even into the Dominican, up towards the Bahamas, um, we could see rainfall totals exceeding 15 to 20 inches of rain. I wouldn't be surprised to see an isolated 30 to 40 inch rainfall amount if this model does come to fruition. Coming back to the mainland, as we begin our Thursday, we are watching that area of low pressure that has brought rain and unsettled cool weather to the Great Lakes and Northeast. It's beginning to move out of Quebec into Newfoundland and Labrador. On the back side, though, we are still seeing some light snow showers across parts of Ontario. Two to five centimeters is expected. But we have high pressure from the south up to Minnesota, back to Idaho, that is keeping our weather quite calm and quiet as we end our work week. We are watching an area of low pressure that is moving out of California through the Four Corners region. It is this low pressure that will move into Texas on our Friday into the weekend. And as it taps into that Gulf moisture, there's going to be enough lift and instability here that we're going to see heavy amounts of rain from eastern Texas through the parish of Louisiana into Mississippi and up through Kansas and Oklahoma. So we're going to see widespread two to four inches with this particular system. I know it doesn't look impressive right now, but as we get over the next 24 to 48 hours, it's really going to get its act together and bring heavy amounts of rain there. And out across the northwest, we are watching yet another atmospheric river make its way on shore. We're going to see heavy amounts of rain and snowfall for British Columbia, but that heavy rainfall is going to extend down through Washington, Oregon, even into California as we get into Saturday and Sunday. We could see widespread two to three inches of rain with this system, and as we get into those higher elevations, we could see significant snowfall to the tune of one to two feet by the time all is said and done. So as we go into our Friday, we watch that atmospheric river continue to make its way inland, bringing that snow to those higher mountaintops of British Columbia, where they're going to be measuring snow two to four or five feet. But here back in the lower 48, we're seeing rain make its way into Seattle and Tacoma, Quileute, you're going to have nearly two to three inches of rain. But here's that low pressure here across the Central Plains really getting going by the time we get to Friday. Heavy rain for eastern Kansas down through Oklahoma, and it's going to continue to pull moisture northward. And so we're going to see this rain field expand as we go Friday into our Saturday. So let's put it all into motion. We watch that low pressure begin to move away. Here's that system. It will bring some snows to Colorado as it moves through the Four Corners region. But as we get into the weekend, Friday into Saturday, we see a, a line of heavy storms starting to form from Lubbock through Dallas, making its way into Louisiana and Mississippi. And that, those storms are going to continue to be present throughout the entirety of the weekend. In the Pacific Northwest, we're going to watch those showers and those snow showers make their way in, bringing heavy amounts of rain. Here by Saturday, we see yet another low pressure making its way onshore, bringing heavy amounts of snow to British Columbia and the Cascades of Washington and rainfall elsewhere. But the eastern half of the United States, it's going to be a quiet and it's going to be an enjoyable weekend. Seasonal weather with that northwesterly flow coming out of Canada. It's going to keep your temperatures maybe a few degrees below normal, but it's going to be great to get out and get those pumpkins and all those outdoor chores done before we get into the first week of November. In terms of our temperature, we are cool across the Great Lakes, 40s and 50s, 80s and 90s down across Texas, but we are still relatively warm across the Central Plains, 60s and 70s, 70s for Georgia and 80s are down into our Florida, out across the Northwest where we're seeing the cloud cover and those that atmospheric river make its way on shore. Temperatures here will be kept down in the 40s and 50s, much of the same for our Friday as well, as we will see 60s inland for Washington and Oregon through Nevada down into Utah, 50s and 60s across the Central Plains. This is gonna be held down because of those rain showers that are moving out of the Four Corners region into Kansas and Oklahoma, the 50s and 40s into the Northeast, much of the same for our Saturday as well with temperatures being kept down where you have those rain showers, temperatures slightly cooler, and we watch yet another atmospheric river and storm system make its way into the Pacific Northwest, dropping temperatures into the 50s for most areas for our Saturday. And as we get through this upcoming weekend, we watch that low pressure move across the Gulf states. It's going to bring some light rain as well to the Tennessee Valley. We're going to watch another low pressure system eject from the Rockies. Initially, we thought this could be a more powerful system, but it's going to get ahead of the upper level low. And so it's really not going to be able to tap into that extra energy associated with the jet streak uh, and the stacking of the lows at all levels of the atmosphere. So we're really going to just see a lot of rain that's going to make its way through the central plains into the Great Lakes Monday into Tuesday. We're not going to see that deepening low that we thought might happen and bring it around a severe weather to the Central Plains and the Great Lakes. But what's going to happen is this low will eventually get detached from the main branch of the jet stream, and we're going to have an upper level low that's just going to sit and spin here in the Great Lakes as we get into Wednesday and Thursday of next week. So it's going to keep temperatures here across the eastern United States much cooler 
uh, than seasonal by about five to 10 degrees from your seasonal norms. And out west, we continue to watch uh, storm after storm system continue to make its way onshore, bringing heavy amounts of rain to the Pacific Northwest and snow in those higher elevations. In terms of our rainfall, as I mentioned, we're gonna see the heaviest amounts of rain here from Kansas to Oklahoma, down through Texas, through the parishes of Louisiana, into places like Biloxi, Mississippi. So we're gonna watch that for heavy amounts of rain. Pacific Northwest, places like Spokane, Portland, you're gonna be inundated with the rainfall this coming weekend. We're going to watch Tropical Storm Melissa, which will likely be Hurricane Melissa by the time we get to the beginning of next week for heavy amounts of rain through the Bahamas, Haiti, and Jamaica. We're going to start here in the Pacific Northwest where we could see four to six inches of rain across British Columbia, two to four inches down along the coast of Washington, Oregon into Northern California. Down along the South Central Plains, we're going to see widespread four to six inches of rain for eastern Oklahoma, one to two across eastern Kansas and eastern Texas. But as we make our way through the parishes of Louisiana, rainfall amounts are generally going to be three to five inches. And that heavy rainfall will extend up towards the Tennessee Valley, where we could see a couple of inches near Memphis making its way over towards Nashville. But as that rain continues to move into Alabama, two to four inches of rainfall is likely. Well, we thank you for joining us here at the Weather Farm on your Thursday. We will have the latest information on Tropical Storm Melissa, where it's going, what's intensity, where are we going to see the heavy heaviest amounts of wind and rain, what kind of preparations need to be taken. But go ahead and drop down in the comments, what's the weather like in your area? Are you under the impact of heavy rains in the Pacific Northwest, down along the Gulf Coast, or are you just enjoying the nice fall weather in your neck of the woods? Have a great day and we will see you soon.